Good day everyone. I am John Dara Seas and I am the assistant leader of Group 4. And today, me and my group mates will discuss about African literature. So without further ado, let's get started. By the end of this discussion, you are expected to define, analyze, characterize, and recognize the famous authors in African literature. These are the contents of our video. Introduction of African Literature Historical Background of African Literature Characteristics and Genres of African Literature and The Famous Authors and Notable Works Africa is a continent with 54 countries. Each country has its own culture, traditions, tribes, and history. It preserves the African nation's rich culture and traditions. African literature is described as works written by authors who live in the countries on the African continent, primarily in the Saharan region. The cultural traditions of many African people are intertwined in African literature, as is the interconnected historical development of the cultural tradition of Europe, Asia, and America. African literature is a collective of works written in a variety of language and genres, extending from oral literature to colonial literature language such as French, Portuguese, and English. It is also written in Amharic, Sulu, Hausa, and Swahili, which are the most common African languages. But before you proceed in African literature, you have any idea what Literature means to Africans. For Africans, literature is an art. It is full of beauty and fault, mysteries, and it improves the relation between the communities. And since now we know what literature means to Africans, let's now proceed to the history of African literature. Good day everyone, I'm Joey Ligotan. Uh, me and my partner, Wanjo Lazaro, uh, were assigned to discuss the historical background of African literature. So, let's start. The beginnings of African literature may be traced back thousands of years to ancient Egypt and hieroglyphs, a writing that employs image to represent words. These Egyptian origins gave rise to Arabic poetry which flourished during the Arab conquest of Egypt in the 7th century. In the 9th century, they traveled to Western Africa. This African and Arabic civilization merged with European culture and literature to develop a distinct literary genre. Throughout its lengthy history, Africa has faced several adversities, which have influenced the topics of its literature. Colonization was one suffering that led to many others. Colonization occurs when individuals leave their home, nation, and settle in another farmers exploit indigenous peoples and the resources of the occupied territory. Slavery result from colonization from the 16th through the 19th century. Millions of Africans were enslaved and transported to western countries all over the world. The African diaspora refers to the movement of Africans, which occurs mostly against their choice. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, Sub-Saharan Africa developed a written literature. This occurred as a result of the arrival of missionaries in the region. The missionaries traveled to Africa to create churches and languages, schools, so that religious scriptures could be translated. Though African literature has a long and rich history, most of the famous works have been published since 1950. Most notably, Things Fall Apart by Chino Achebe. It is crucial to go beyond the most current works in order to fully comprehend the evolution of this collection of literature. Chino Achebe's Things Fall Apart, it is crucial to go beyond the most current works in order to fully comprehend the evolution of this collection of literature. Let us now look at some aspects of African literature. Now we know the history of African literature. Let's now move on to the characteristics and genres of African literature. Good day everyone, I am Natasha Nicole Duque. Me and my partner, John Rain Montel, were assigned to discuss the characteristics and genres of African literature. 
a slave story is a written or spoken description of a fugitive's or former slave's life or significant portion of their existence. Slave narratives are one of the most significant traditions in American literature, influencing the form and subject of some of the most famous and divisive works of fiction and autobiography in the country's history. African pride, African literature includes work created by African and European language, as well as tradition oral and written literatures in Afro-Asian and African language. Decent, the United States was established on Decent, and some of the most enduring works of American literature deal with politically controversial issues at the time. The course will focus on the two different high points of descent. In the United States, the first debate over slavery in the 1950s and then the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s in order to keep the reading least under control. Progress against colonization as African nation gained their independence in the 1950s to 1960s with liberation and increased literacy. However, before this time, many African writers and poets suffered greatly and were compelled to cast aside their artistic vocation in order to be involved in the liberation struggle of their people. Nationalist leader with captivating personalities and excellent academic capacity led independence effort they were able to interpret nation of equality and nationalism as international pan africanists Hi everyone, I am Natasha Nicole Duque. So, for our today's lesson, we will be discussing the genres of African literature. So, let's get on to our lesson for today. And now, as I said earlier, we'll discuss the genres of African literature. There are four different types of African literature. It is the oral literature, pre-colonial African literature, colonial African literature, and post-colonial African literature. Before we go into the four types of genres, let me clarify what African genres are. Through the analysis of written literatures, from the Long East Coast, African genres enacts a broad routine of academic and popular ideas of Africa. It shows how location, literary form, and interpretive methods all work together to generate these big ideas. So, we will now move on to the oral literature. It is often known as folk literature. In written civilizations, the phrase oral literature also refers to a tradition in which Specific genres are passed down by word of mouth, but a lot of oral literature has been transcribed. It contains oral histories, folklore, and stories passed down through the years. And now, ritual texts, creative chants, epic poems, musical genres, folk tales, creation tales, songs, myths, spells, legends, proverbs, riddles, tongue twisters, word games, recitations, life histories, or historical narratives are some examples of oral literature. Into the next one, we'll go on to the pre-colonial literature. What is pre-colonial literature? Pre-colonial literature refers to the works written before white men arrived on the African continent. Before that, oral traditions and folk tales were used which made children's literature of the time period particularly interesting. Let's look at some pre-colonial literature examples. What pre-colonial literature can you think of? There are the form of sabi, riddles, epics, and myths abound in pre-colonial literature. There is folk tales, epics, poetry, and marathon chants were passed down the generations by word of mouth in almost every ethnolinguistic group. And now, the third one that we will be discussing is about the colonial African literature. So now, what is colonial African literature? The term colonial African literature 
refers to literature published during or about the colonial period in Africa. It could have been written by colonialists because it emphasizes the African as the inferior other and attempts to justify the colonial mission of the West. And lastly, the final topic that we will talk about is African postcolonial literature. Postcolonial literature in Africa refers to works published after various African countries acquired political independence from European colonial rule. And since now we know what the characteristics and genres of African literature, let's now proceed to our last part, which is the famous authors and their notable works. Abby, please proceed. Good day everyone, I'm Abigail Pasibugan, the leader of Group 4. Me and my partner Altea May Cruz were assigned to discuss the famous authors and their notable works. Amanita Forna, OBE is a Scottish and a Sierra Leonean writer. She is the author of A Memoir, The Devil That Danced on Water, A Daughter's Quest, and the Four Novels, Ancestor Stones, and The Memory of Love, The Hired Man and Happiness, born November 1964, age 57 years, Belshale United Kingdom, spouse, Simon Westcott, education, University College London Movies Girl Rising Aminata Forna is a Scottish writer and was born in Scotland and raised in Sierra Leone. Her notable works are Happiness, The Hard Man, The Memory of Love, The Ancestor Stones, and The Devil That Danced on the Water, and an essay collection, The Window Seat. Notes from a life in motion that have been translated into 22 languages. Alain Mabanko is a novelist, journalist, poet, and academic, a French citizen born in the Republic of Congo. He is currently a professor of literature at UCLA. He is best known for his novels and nonfiction writings depicting the experience of contemporary African Dispotu Africa and African Diaspora in France Born 24 February 1966 Age 55 years Pointe Noire Republic of Congo Awards Gone Count List Poland's Choice Nominations Grand Prix Literaire d'Afrique Noire Alain Mabanku is a novelist and a poet that was born on February 24, 1966, in Republic of the Congo. Alain Mabanku is currently a professor of French and Francophone studies at the University of California, Los Angeles. He is known for his novels and non-fiction writing. His notable works are Blue Blanc Rouge or Blue, White and Red and Memoire de Pork Epic or Porcupine Memories. Ayi Kwe Armen, born 1939, Takuradi Gold Coast, now Ghana. Ghanaian novelist whose work deals with corruption and materialism and contemporary Africa. Born 1939, age 82, Gold Coast, notable works, Fragments, Osiris Rising, The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born, The Healers, 2000 Seasons. Ayi Kwe Arma Ayi Kwe Arma from Ghana, born on October 28, 1939, a Ghanaian writer whose work deals with corruption and materialism in contemporary Africa. His notable works are The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born, Fragments, 2000 Seasons, The Healer, and A Serious Rising. Nadine Gordimer was a South African writer 
political activist and recipient of 1991 Nobel Prize in Literature. She was recognized as a writer who through her magnificent epic writing has been of very great benefit of humanity. Born 20 November 1923, Union of South Africa, died July 13, 2014, John Hansenberg, South Africa, Nationality, South African, Awards, Nobel Prize in Literature, Booker Prize, Unsatisfied Wolf Book Award for Fiction, Spouse, Reinhold Cashier. 1954 to 2001 Gabronsky 1949 to 1952 Children Orain Gabronsky Hugo Cashier Nadine Gardimer Nadine Gardimer was a South African writer, political activist, and recipient of the 1991 Nobel Prize in Literature. Gardimer produced 15 novels, over 200 short stories, and countless essays and critical studies. One of her most well-known works is The Lying Days, Gardimer's first novel. Her other notable works are Burger's Daughter, Face to Face, Get Alive, July's People, No Time Like the Present, and The Conservationist. Shimamanda Nyozi Adishi is a Nigerian writer whose works include novels, short stories, and nonfiction. Born September 15, 1977, 44 years, Inugu, Nigeria. Spouse Ivara Esij. Awards Women's Prize for Fiction, National Book Critics Circles Award for Fiction, Education. University of Nigeria, Nizuka Dresel University, Eastern Connecticut State University, Parents, James Noye Adishi, Grace Ayofoma. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is a Nigerian writer born in 1977. Purple Hibiscus, her debut novel was warmly praised when it was published in 2003. She studied medicine for a year at Nusaka and left for the U.S. at the age of 19. Her other notable works are Americana, For Love of Biafra, Half of a Yellow Sun, Nose on Grief, The Thing Around Your Neck, and We Should All Be Feminists. Yugi Hua Chong -o is a Kenyan writer and academic who writes primarily in Gikuyu. His works include novels, plays, short stories, and essays, ranging from literary and social critics to children's literature. He is the founder and editor of the Gikuyu language journal Mutiri, born January 5, 1938. Age 83 years old. Kamiritu, Kenya. Spouse, Yejiri Wang Yuji. Children, Mukoma Wang Yuji. Wanjiku Wang Yuji. Ten Yuji. Duku Wang Yuji. Parents, Wanjiku Yuji. Chong O Waduku. Siblings, Walans Wangi. Ngugi Wation O, full name James Tiong O Ngugi, was a Kenyan novelist often regarded as the best in East Africa. In Lumiro, Kenya, he was born on January 5, 1938. The River Between in 1965, A Grain of Wheat in 1967, Petals of Blood in 1977, and Devil on the Cross in 1980 were all published after Whip Not Child the first notable novel written in English by an East African, as he became more aware of the impact of colonialism in Africa. Mugi took on his traditional name and began writing in the Bantu language of Kenya's Kikuyu people. Bessie Amelia Emery Head was South African writer who though was born in South Africa. 
is usually considered Botswana's most influential writer. She wrote novels, short fiction, and, and autobiographical works that are infused with spiritual questioning and reflection. Born in July 6, 1937, Peter Maritzburg, South Africa, died April 17, 1986. Sarah Wee, Botswana, spouse, Harold Head, parents, Bessie Amelia Emery, parents, Bessie Amelia Emery, genre, short fiction, novels, short personal essays, children, Howard Head. Bessie Emery Head was a South African author who wrote morally didactic novels and stories about contradictions and shortcomings of pre- and post-colonial African society. She was born on July 6, 1937 in Pieter Maritzburg, South Africa and died on April 17, 1986 in Surawe, Botswana. When Rain Clouds Gathering in 1969 was an objective affirmative story about an exile finding new meaning in his adopted town. While Maru 1971 was a more introspective story about a light color sunbushman woman seeking in accept acceptance in a black dominated African civilization. A Question of Power release in 1973 is an openly autobiographical portrayal of disorientation and paranoia in which the heroine survives alone by willpower. Okinwande Oliwol Babantund Soyinka Known as Wol Soyinka is a Nigerian playwright, novelist, poet, and essayist in English language. He was awarded the 1986 Nobel Prize in Literature, the first Sub-Saharan African to be honored in the category. Suyinka was born in Yoruba family in Abukota, born July 13, 1934, age 87 years old, Abukota, Nigeria. Nationality, Nigerian, spouse, Folek Doherty Soyinka Children Olunkun Soyinka Olaukun Soyinka Moremi Soyinka Onijala Eyatade Apampa Education University of Leeds 1954 to 1957 University of London 1954 Parents Samuel Ayudele Soyinka Grace Enoila Suyinka Wal Suyinka was born in the western Nigerian city of Abyukuta on July 13, 1934. He continued his university studies at the University of Leeds after completing his preparatory university studies at Government College in Ibanda, 1954. He received his doctorate in 1973 he worked as a dramaturg at the Royal Court Theatre in London from 1958 to 1959 during his sixth year stay in England. He returned to Nigeria to study Africa play after receiving a Rockefeller bursary in 1960. He also taught drama and literature at University in Ibandan, Lagos, and LFE where he has been professor of comparative literature since 1975. He performed the 1960 Mass Theatre Company in 1960 and the Orinson Theatre Group in 1964. Chinua Achibe was a Nigerian novelist, poet, and critic who is regarded as the dominant figure in the modern African literature. His first novel, Magnum Opus, Things Fall Apart, occupies a pivotal place in African literature and remains the most widely studied, translated, and read African novels. Born November 16, 1930, Ojidi, Nigeria. Died 21st of March, 2013, Boston, Massachusetts. United States, nationality, Nigerian. Spouse, Christiana Chinwi Okili. 
Awards International Booker Prize Peace Prize of German Book Trade Education University of London Worldwide University of Ibadan University of London Chinua Achebe was a Nigerian novelist and the author of Things Fall Apart which earned him the title of Patriarch of the African Novel. With the release of his first novel, Things Fall Apart in 1958, Chinua Achebe made an impact. It has now sold more than 20 million copies and been translated into more than 50 languages, making it one of the major works of the African literature. Achebe went on the published book like No Longer at Ease in 1960, Arrow of God 1964, and Ant Hills of ne the Savannah in 1987 as well as teaching as prestigious college in the United States and Nigeria. He died on March 21, 2013 in Boston, Massachusetts, at the age of 82. Characteristics of African Literature The first one, we have the broad scope of production. This literature has been composed in English for Western and African audiences. It is also composed of African languages and African readings. African literature can be complicated. There are some experts who believe that African literature should only be composed in African language. However, other believes that African literature can be written in any languages as long as the author is from Africa. The next one is that it comes from all thoughts of Africa. Themes and contextual cues derive from the situations and poor environment of it. Slave narratives. African literature is written by fugitive slaves about their lives in South and often after escaping freedom. Next one, we have the protests against colonization. African writers aimed at revealing the social evils of colonial rule and to encourage a sense of African. West African authors use their writings to speak out against enslavement and for racial equality. They argued against colonial stereotypes of Africans as primitive, savage, and lacking distinctive cultural and political systems of their own. Call for Independence Independence campaigns were led by nationalist leaders with charismatic personalities and great intellectual ability. In touch with international pan-Africanists, they were able to frame ideas of equality and nationalism. African Pride Creating African identities that promote the idea of a cultural movement of African literary renaissance. Next one is the hope of the future. It focuses on the literature of hope and despair over the betrayal of the goals of liberation struggles in Africa. Descent. Writers express a different opinion through writing poems, stories, and etc., in which characters have profound messages to political issues. In a continent as ethnically and culturally diverse as Africa, it comes as no surprise that the literature has emerged it to be equally diverse and multifaceted, dealing with a range of social and cultural issues from women's rights to feminism to post-war and post-colonial identity. Contemporary African literature often documents how corrupt modern African governments perpetuate the suffering of African people. It is built upon the history of slavery, oppression, violation, and humiliation. Basically, it is written out of the disgustful life of Africans. Next one is that African literature has its several forms of expression, which is the oral tradition, written tradition, post-colonial African literature, pre-colonial literature, and colonial African literature. In oral tradition, sharing advice, histories, stories through talking and presenting simply means literature delivered by word of mouth. Research result shows that Africans rarely use paper for literature. They usually use oral techniques in telling stories, which is called the orator. 
The reason why they mainly focus on erasure is that because they expect their audience to participate and respond. Next one is the written tradition. Writers express themselves in books, newspapers, literary pieces, and etc. through writing and encoding. Pre-colonial African literature means that literary works done before the coming of the white men to the African continent. Colonial African literature is written during the colonial period or that it speaks about the colonial period in Africa. And the last one, we have the post-colonial African literature. It refers to writing produced after the political independence of various African states which were formerly subject to a European colonial rule. And the last one, we have the expansion to another genre. It can be in hymns, romance, epic, poetry, fictional narrative, diaries and journals, philosophy, biography, and autobiography. Congratulations, classmates! You reached this part of this video. I hope you learned a lot from our discussion, and most importantly, you enjoy listening to us. Again, I am John Calaseas, the assistant leader of Group 4. I'm Abigail Pasibugan, the leader of Group 4. I am Natasha Nicole Duque. I'm Joey Ligotan. Janine Isaac Asmontal. I am Lazaro Juancho Gabriel. I am Altea May H. Cruz. And we are the Group 4. Before we end this video, I would like to leave this line from Mariam Makeba. Africa has her mysteries and even a wise man cannot understand them. But a wise man, respect them. Before we close this discussion, I would like to leave this Bible verse to you. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. These are the members of Group 4. Leader, Abigail Pasibugan. Assistant Leader, Jantal Elseas. Members, Altea May Cruz. Atasha Nicole Duque. John Rain Montel. Joey Ligutan. And Juancho Lazaro.